Hey, um, we're uh, we're going to have a look at um, doing some uh, photo retouching or some photo restoration, and we're going to experiment using Adobe's neural filters to do that. This is a picture of my dad. It was taken about 50 years ago today, and it was sent to me by my brother who scanned it and asked me if I could fix it up a little bit, because you can see that it's a little bit grungy. It's a low resolution scan and there's a lot of kind of crust on that photo. Let's see if we can use those neural filters to fix it up a little bit. First off, we'll do a really rough, uh, really rough crop of the image. Um, just to cut out those photo edges. That looks pretty good, and I reckon we should increase the image size of it because my brother wants to print it. So I'm going to resample that and make it about, uh, I don't know, maybe 300, three times bigger. So we're in the 2000s of pixels across. Go OK. So that's going to make have made it a little softer, but hopefully um, our neural filters can use their artificial intelligence to um, fill in some of those gaps. So we'll go over to our to those filters before mentioned, the neural filters, and we'll open up the neural filter workspace. And inside of here we get a whole bunch of options. There's a, a range of different um, neural filters that we can choose from. And we're going to start by having a look at the photo restoration filter and then also we might as well have a crack at colorizing this black and white image. By default, these um, filters aren't downloaded to your system, so you have to click on the little cloud with the arrow button to download them. I've already downloaded the photo restoration one, so it's there, ready to go. All I need to do now is, once it's downloaded, is to turn it on, and um, you'll see that Photoshop is kind of processing our photo restoration. You can see it's done some work there. Um, it's in oh, used this parameter, the photo enhancement, and the enhance face parameter to kind of smooth over some of those wrinkles and smooth out some of those artifacts from enlarging the image. I reckon that's um, pretty rough what it's done there, so I'm going to pull back those enhancements. I want to keep some of the original photographic qualities. Um, I'll actually enjoy a bit of the, um, the old noise from the, um, um, from the print. So I think it'd be good to keep some of that in there. Um, and the main thing I want to do here is reduce all of those scratches. So we've got this scratch reduction parameter. And I'm going to bring that right up and kind of implement the maximum amount of scratch reduction that I can. See if we can get it to pull out all of these little um, defects. And these kind of defects in the past we would have manually used retouching tools to remove. And you can see that now that that filter's been implemented, a lot of that has automatically been taken out, which is pretty kind of impressive, I reckon. Fantastic. We've got a couple of other um, parameters, values that we can um, implement here. We've got our noise reduction, color noise reduction. We can re remove halftone pattern if your image has been scanned from a magazine or some kind of um, printed, unphotographic print, or non-photographically printed material, like a magazine or something like that. Um, we can also remove JPEG artifacts if um, required. And I'm going to implement just a little bit of noise reduction and some JPEG artifact reduction 
see if we can smooth out some of those pixels. And there we go. So I think that's looking reasonably good. Um, quite kind of natural, a little bit soft, but um, certainly an improvement on the original. How about we go and have a, a go at uh, colorizing this image to see if we can um, imbue a bit of uh, color. And we can do that with our colorize neural filter. So we'll switch that on as well. And you can see it's had a crack at um, implementing color sort of automatically. And it's done a pretty good job with the hair and this, the face tone, but it's looking a bit sort of weird over here um, with our uh, with our jacket. Um, kind of like the blue tones of the uh, the jacket. Um, let's see if we can sort of fix that up a little bit by manually coloring um, our uh, our image. Um, so this is these are the parameters that we've got with the colorize uh, neural filter. Um, so this is the automatic color um, sort of implementation. Um, there are a couple of profiles that we could attempt to apply, um, sort of a range of different um, color kind of attempts. Um, for example, the high contrast. I'll take a little moment for that to implement. All of these profiles, um, as you can see, I think, probably a little bit over the top. So you'll want to drop the profile strength um, considerably um, to make it a little bit more natural. Still got this kind of ombre effect here in the jacket, which uh, I don't like too much. We can reduce the sa overall saturation of the um, color implementation uh, just to sort of, you know, pull it back a little bit. And also we can adjust the mix of colors across our um, across the implementation of color. Um, there's also a bit of noise reduction and artifact reduction that we can implement there. Um, I'm going to remove the profile and just go back to our original um, color implementation because I think that that's I don't want to take it over the top I want it to be fairly subdued uh, as natural as possible. But we're going to see if we can address this ombre looking effect here and um, see if we can get a, a fully blue kind of suit. Um, so we can do that with some manual color um, implementation. What we can do is in various on various parts of the image, we can create a kind of a pin and that'll bring up a, uh, a color picker and I can pick a color to implement in that spot. So just remember that color that we've um, chosen there, sort of a gray blue, and I'll click OK. And you can see that it's added that pin to the um, um, to the jacket position there. And we'll just wait for that to uh, render. So that's looking quite a bit more consistent than the, um, this other side over here. Um, and we can sort of vary the strength of that implementation like if I wanted it to be brighter I could bring that up to the right but I think more likely I want to drop the strength of that color to make it a little bit more um, uh, subtle. The other thing I want to do is implement that same color on this side so after implementing this little pin here I'm going to add another one over here and apply that to the other side of the jacket and that's looking pretty good. Um, given that uh, uh, this picture is a photograph for the, my dad's uh, um, employment profile at the union that he was in, I reckon, uh, I reckon he'll be wearing a, uh, a red tie there. So let's implement uh, a red color here. Um, I've just popped in a pin and I'll change that color to red color picker, something bright red, and we'll pull down the color strength just a little bit. Um, 
and then something like that's looking quite good. All right, I reckon that's not bad. Um, we could have an attempt at sort of tinting the um, the uh, the shirt and the background potentially, um, but given that uh, those areas are pretty overexposed anyway, I'm not sure how good the result would be. Um, we could go into um, uh, his eyes and maybe make his eyes blue because his eyes definitely were blue, but I reckon that's pretty good for the, this demonstration. And um, we could go and output that to um, our file. Um, so in terms of output, we can um, output to a couple of different things. A new layer is what I want to do. We could go to a new document or indeed a smart filter if we wanted to be able to re-edit this we can do that um, so I'm going to click OK and see how that looks compared to the original so we're back in our regular Photoshop workspace um, and you can see our colorized image looks pretty good um, if we go back to the original you can see that that's uh, kind of uh, I think that's an, an improvement, an enhancement, and I think my brother would be pretty happy with that. 